guys, I want to welcome you to another one of our devotionals. I'm excited to be with you guys today on this beautiful Wednesday. If you catch us on the day we release it, if not, I just hope whatever day you're watching it, it's going to be an awesome day. But anyways, we're going to get into things. We're going to continuing what I've been talking about recently, which I'm sure you can all can guess is on the love of God, because there's just so much to it. And I'm going to jump into it, and we're hitting on 1 Corinthians 13, 6. So it's still part of the long, you know, the long passage in 1 Corinthians that kind of basically goes through and tells us what love is. And this part of the passage is talking about how love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. And I want to hit on that because that's something really important so that we can understand about, you know, us and ourselves and like, you know, where we stand, heart checking ourselves, like say, okay, how am I walking in love in this area? But it also portrays a characteristic of God and who God is that sometimes we tend to overlook or we don't see all the time. Or, you know, if you're grown in like strict religious background, don't even know. So the first one is understanding that love does not rejoice in iniquity. So what does this mean? It means that you basically don't find joy in sin. So rejoicing in iniquity means you find joy, you find entertainment, you desire to go after the things that God calls sin or that God calls wrong. You know, a list of these things we can see in Romans 1, 29 through 32. It says us, it tells us like straight up, like what are things that are unrighteous? What are things that are considered iniquity? And it says, again, Romans 1, 29, 32, it says being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetedness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers or, you know, gossipers, you know, another way to say it, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, un untrustworthy unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knows the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So that's a huge list. You know, that's a lot of stuff. But it's not saying because, you know, don't 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 confuse loving iniquity versus, you know, accidentally making a mistake or falling into things or you know, doing that kind of stuff. There's a difference between learning and growing and purposely desiring and going after. And that's what this is talking about when it's talking about love does not rejoice in iniquity. It doesn't purposely go after iniquity. You know, this is where you've got to do some heart checking with yourself, you know, like where do you stand with different, different things in your life? Like, do you purposely try to go out and do these things? Like, does this bring joy to you? Does this bring entertainment to you? You know, if you were left alone with your own devices and there was nobody around and, you know, you felt like you could get away with it, would you do it? That's really what it comes down to, you know, because if it's something you don't desire, if it's something you don't want to do, then you're more than likely not going to do it unless it's like accidental or whatever. But otherwise, you know, you don't try to go after it. And, you know, the Bible tells us that iniquity is birthed in the heart. It's birthed in our thoughts. It's things you think about on a regular basis. Like, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about, you know, going out and doing things you know you shouldn't do? Like, if I had the opportunity, I know I would go out and do this. If I didn't have the consequences that this would, you know, cause, I would so do this. You know, that's what it's like thinking about iniquity, rejoicing in iniquity. And God says he doesn't want us to be that way. He's like, keep it far from you. Run from it. Don't even think about it, you know. He's like, don't even go there. Another thing that we, you know, can look at when it comes to uh, walking out, you know, being in iniquity is also understanding that we don't, we're not happy if something bad happens to somebody else. So sometimes, you know, a, a phrase that you hear a lot and, you know, I've, I've thought it and said it a few times and I'd repent going back looking over this is like, man, they really deserve that, you know. And that's something that's talking about rejoicing in iniquity. So if you see something bad happen to somebody else or something, you know, that they go through or their troubles or their turmoils, you know, instead of thinking, 
well, they deserve that because of their behavior, what they do. They deserve all this horrible stuff happening to them. That's a form of rejoicing in iniquity. And God doesn't want us to do that towards each other. He doesn't want us to think that way. He doesn't want us to think bad things. He doesn't want us to expect bad things or be happy when bad things happen to other people. You know, even if it's an individual that you have a hard time with or an individual that you're like, well, you know, I don't really get along with or whatever. Thinking or wanting bad things to happen to somebody else is wrong. That's a form of rejoicing in iniquity, and that's not what love does. Love does the opposite, you know? We, we you know, because even Jesus, like we as Christians, everybody, we deserve hell. But God's like, no, you know, he said, I died for you. I paid the price for you. I sacrificed everything for you so you didn't have to go, so you don't have to go to that punishment, so you don't have to do that. Even if you deserve it, he still didn't want it for us, you know. And that's the same way as we as Christians need to see other people, you know, regardless of whether you think they deserve it or not. We've got to make sure our heart motivation is we don't want them to have to go through that. We don't want them to suffer that. We don't want them to lose that, you know. And that's what he's talking about. You know, the Bible tells us that we should wish good on those who harm us. You know, we should bless those who curse us. And that's a part of walking out in love, you know. That's the opposite. You know, it says Psalms, even Psalm 16, uh, 66, Psalm 66, 18 tells us if we, if we had cherished iniquity in our heart, the Lord would not listen. So it's talking about how if you cherish iniquity, I mean, you enjoy iniquity, you think about it, you want to do it, you have a desire for it. It says the Lord will not listen to you, De depending on your prayers, depending on what you're calling out for, depending on what you're believing for. He says if you harbor iniquity inside of your heart, if you enjoy it, if you cherish it, if you're like, I want to do everything I want to do and live my life however I want to live it, you know, and you enjoy going out and doing those things, it says God's not going to listen to you. He's not going to listen to your prayers. He's not going to listen to your petitions because you're harboring iniquity. So that's why it's so important that we come before him and say, God, you know, take all of this out. And that goes into how God rejoices with the truth because the truth is the word of God. The truth is how he wants us to live. You know, the truth should be our joy. It should be our entertainment. It should be our desires, not the things that the world, the world, has to offer, but the things that God has to offer. That should be what we seek after. That should be what we want to do. You know, we need to understand that God's love for us is the same way. He loves us so much, you know, that he wants good for us. He wants to bless us. He wants to prosper us. You know, God's not up there thinking, you know, well, they deserve this, so I'm going to give them this sickness, or they deserve to go through all this hardship so they learn a lesson. Like, that's not who God is. And I want you guys to get that because sometimes people get stuck in that aspect like, well, I guess I just deserve this. Maybe this is God's punishment for something or the other. But we don't understand that God already paid the price for us. He paid the price for our punishment. Now, we have consequences based off of the actions we do. You know, if you do something, you're going to have to deal with consequences. But those consequences aren't the result of God's judgment. Those are consequences based off of sin and what sin does in your life because sin comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God comes that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So we've got to understand that. And God's the same way. He rejoices in good things. He rejoices in, in the truth, you know. And understanding that, you know, this comes with repentance. Truth comes with repentance, which is why God rejoices in truth. He rejoices in repentance because repentance is taking what you're doing, taking the evil, taking the iniquities and saying, you know what, God, this has been something in my life that it has a stronghold that I have had a desire for, that I have chased after. And God, I am sorry. I'm going to bring it before you today and we're going to get rid of it. You know, I want to change it because it's exposing it. When you expose something, you're exposing it to the truth. You're exposing it to the light. You're, you know, you're bringing it out. And that's why God rejoices in it because it's, the Bible tells us that the truth shall set us free. So when we come and rejoice in the truth, when we walk in the truth, when we accept the truth, it sets us free. So therefore, it's something to rejoice in. It's not something to hide from. It's not something to shun. It's not something to try to like you know ignore or push under the br the push under or, or you know say well I don't want to talk about the Bible I don't want to talk about God I don't want to do this thing no rejoice in that rejoice in the word of God rejoice in what's good because that's what love does and that's what God does for us you know 
And I just want to encourage you guys, you know, to think on this farther today. You know, the difference in understanding, because there's a whole lot more I could have gone into, but we are trying to keep these little short, so I'm staying in my time limit. <laughs> but go back through and really think about that today, okay? Well, what does rejoicing in the truth look like? You know, what does rejoicing in the Word of God do? What does the truth do for my life? And help me, Lord, you know, help me, Jesus, learn to rejoice in the truth that you do in all aspects of my life. And understanding that that is also a part of love. And I just want to encourage you guys to do that. And again, thank you so much for watching these videos with us weekly. And I hope it blesses you because I know it sure does bless me. But you guys have a good day and God bless.